Okay, uh, as usual, I'm going to record every section of my lecture here. So uh, in case I forgotten to I forgot to do the recording, uh, please you guys uh, remind me to do the recording for it. All right, so please remind me to do the recording. If you notice that I didn't uh, record the lecture, yeah. So you may see this uh, notice. Yeah. Mm, all right. So I, yeah, it's recording now. Okay. Good. Okay. One by one. So. Okay. So uh oh yeah, I think maybe this one first. Um. Yeah, I know it's a little bit silly over here, but um. So that's the regulations. Uh, please, uh, uh, during these sections from six to nine thirty, okay, uh, please drop by your spectrums and take your attendance over here. Okay, uh, please drop by your spectrum and take your attendance over here. Uh, in between six to nine thirty, so you have plenty of time to do this. Okay, uh, but don't forget to do it right. Okay. As usual, so uh, after I've done the recording, so all my lecture, I think you guys probably know this. So we'll be go into the channel of this SQB704. So that will be in this uh, general. So that will be appear over here. Okay, uh, you may uh, go and get the uh, download or view the video in this folder file, right? Okay, so that, that's a general thing. Right, so uh, let's go to this thing first. Uh, one, one. Okay, so number one. All right, uh, this thing I have already uploaded to the spectrums. Okay, so you can get these informations. So uh, first one will be the uh, cost performa. So yeah, you can see here. So it uh, briefly discuss the synopsis for the cost. So at least you have some idea. Um, um, the, the, the content or the topic that we're going to discuss in this course. Yeah? So as usual, I think you guys uh, probably know already. So the uh, continuous assessment is 50% and the final examination is uh, 50%. Yeah? So you may get, uh, I think this is the important information in this file. So the uh, synopsis for the course. No textbook, okay. So this is the first uh, official documents. Okay. So the next one will be this, the uh, current information. Okay. Uh, so maybe you can look at this. So uh, here list down some of the recommended textbook for this course. Okay. Uh, maybe I will let you know. Um, most of my, or not all, okay, most of my uh, teaching material are uh, get from this book, uh, Alan Carr, okay, Probability. Yeah. Um, there is a hard copy in our UM library. Okay. But I think all of you are, uh, 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 not going to drop by to your campus. Okay. So, so you might go and get this one. Uh, okay. So uh, there are also other references. Okay. Ross and so on. Okay. You might get this thing. All right. Uh, so the uh, next one will be this. <laughs> So this is my original plan for the uh, assessment of the course. So as I said just now, so the continuous assessment will be 50%, whereas the um, another 50% will be for the final examinations. Yeah. Okay, uh, because uh, there might be some change of the regulation for the uh, final, ex uh, the format for the final exam, which uh, I can't tell you now because um, I haven't get the, the, the what they call it the, the final notice from the faculty yeah so that's why i also not sure uh how's the format for this uh, final examination so i will update you later okay and um, because of this so i might need to do some changes of my plan here okay according to my original plan will be this so I'm going to uh, split this continuous assessment 50% into three parts. So uh, two assignments, 10%, 20%, and uh, another 20% for the test. So my original plan was um, assignment. So the deadline will be the submission 
deadline will be a uh, third of December, so which is actually uh, in week seven. Okay. And for assignment two, uh, this is uh, actually my original plan will be week twelve. Okay. Uh, so whereas for the test, so I'm gonna. Uh, this is my original plan. So it's supposed to be on week fourteen. Okay. And as I said, I still don't know what is the format for the final exam because according to my original plan, so this one will be on uh, week. 16 or 17 okay ah, that means uh, okay, 16 or 17 okay however uh, it seems that uh, there might be a change for this thing so this one possible in week 14 okay i'm not sure about this okay good question mark here so uh because of this uncertainty uh, i think maybe i'm going to revise uh, the date for the test care so that's why i'm going to change this yeah it doesn't really matter so the test so i'm going to put it over here so the test so as usual that will be a uh, again 20 percent the proportion will be the same so the uh so the time is still the same six to seven pm so the only difference will be um i'm going to put it to a 12 oh sorry not 12 17 of december so this is uh, actually uh, in week nine okay anyway i'm going to uh, i think i'm going to put it in this way so week seven will be the deadline for assignment one uh for assignment two uh week 12 okay so seven to nine, there are two weeks gaps for preparing for a test should be okay. And after that, uh, three weeks for the preparation for your assignment too. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, the gaps should be okay, right? So for the final exam, so not sure. So to be announced, okay, I will update you guys uh, later, whether I'm going to put it in week 14 as a, um, bring home assignments or a written examinations, online examination in week 16 or 17. So I will let you know uh, later, okay? So that is the, uh, the assessment method for this course. Okay. Any, any questions? Uh, okay, uh, one more. Uh, okay, I have one more request from from you guys. Huh? Okay, so as you guys can see, most of the time I'm going to display a screen like this. So which means uh, I can't see your message over here. Okay, so uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, voice up. Okay, just voice up. Don't just type a message over here because I can't see it. Okay, most of the time. Yeah, so you have any question, please voice out instead of uh, type it over here, right? Uh. Okay, so uh, that is the thing, some notice for the uh, assessment uh, for this course, okay? Right. Okay, so that's it for this. Okay, uh, next will be this. Huh? So as... For all the courses, okay, I think this is the last one among all the courses that you have attended for this week. Okay? So this is Friday. So I believe uh, you all know this. So for our class, so our I don't want to say lecture, for our class will be from 6 p.m. and then run up to 9.30 p.m. Okay, three and a half hours. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do it in this way. So I'm going to split this uh, three and a half hours into three sections. Okay? First, that will be starting from 6 p.m. and then up to around... Um, okay, sorry, I'm a bit lazy. So I would say 7.15 plus, plus uh, p.m. plus plus. Okay? 
So it might be up to, okay, plus plus, okay, around this. So one, one hour, 15 minutes, or maybe one hour, one and a half hour, okay? So uh, this is the first section for the lecture, okay? Section one for the lecture. And after that, uh, I'm going to give you guys a break. So 7.30 to 8 p.m. So a break of half an hour. But as I said, uh, usually it will be some extra five minutes or 10 minutes, okay? Because uh, it depends on the progress here, okay? So I try not to reach up to 7.30, okay? I will start early. And after that, so we have the, our second section for our lecture, 8.30. Oh, sorry, it until again. So I don't want to fix the time. So that will be a 9.15 plus plus, okay? But uh, definitely uh, not more than 9.30. Okay? So this is the second section for a lecture. So approximately uh, my lecture will be sort of like, uh, so maybe I would say uh, one, 20, one hour, 25 minutes. Okay, one hour to plus another one hour to five minutes. So it's around two hours and 15 minutes around. Okay. So roughly like that. Okay. So that is the how I'm going to uh, conduct the lectures over here. Okay. Okay. So do uh, you have any comment with this setting? I believe okay, right? Okay, so uh, as usual, silent. I will assume everything. Uh, uh, everybody agree with this. Okay. Okay. Uh, next things. Um, that will be the discussion for our tutorial questions. Uh, since we make once per week. Okay, so our tutorial section will be put together over here. Um, since we only have a uh, one groups over here, so that will be quite easy and. Uh, it can be quite flexible for us to arrange the tutorial sections. Okay? So uh, I'm not going to fix the, the tutorial sections, but roughly like that. So maybe we have all together 14 weeks, right? Mm, okay, maybe week three or week four. Okay, depends on the progress of my lecture. So I'm going to start the tutorial, first tutorial one. Okay, uh, and so on. So most usually, uh, maybe uh, I'm going to spend two, uh, uh, two weeks for one tutorial paper. Okay, so two weeks. I have all together five tutorials, so that means it's about ten weeks for five tutorial paper. Okay. Ah. Uh. So that's why I'm uh, beginning with 14. So then up to week four, up to around week 14. So we should be able to finish it. Okay. So two weeks, something like that. Okay. So this is for the uh, tutorial section. All right. Uh, as I said, uh, since we have only one group here, so it can be quite flexible. Okay. So uh, we can always uh, do some rearrangement for the tutorial sections for the course. Okay. Okay, um, that's it for our general uh, information about the course. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. just a question on the tutorial. Um, All right. uh, are we expected to have um, uh, finished the, um, try the, the attempt the problem uh, before we come to the tutorial or are we uh, finishing the problem together with you during the tutorial? Uh, okay, uh, how should I say? Okay, so uh, I'm not going to expect uh, you guys to have any presentations or what uh, regarding to the tutorial questions, okay? Um, but I, I hope, I hope, okay, I hope that you guys will try to solve the tutorial question first before uh, come to the tutorial sections, yeah? So maybe my usual practice will be like this. I hope you guys can give a shot first. You try to do the questions, okay? So uh, if you have any 
problems with that particular that tutorial question. So you let me know in advance. Okay, so uh, uh, we're going to focus on those questions during the tutorial sessions. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's not compulsory for you guys. Uh, come on, you are all uh, grow up people, right? You are not small kids. So I'm not going to force you guys to do the uh, homework. <laughs> okay. So uh, you guys, uh, but I expect you will try to solve the exercise of this, the tutorial questions. Okay. Uh, so in case you have any issue, so you let me know. Uh, I will focus on those questions that discuss. If I receive no comment on it, okay. So maybe I will just pick some of the which I think important and challenging question to discuss during the tutorial sections. All right. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. By the way, can I see how many attendants were? How many members? Eleven. Okay, never mind. I suppose all of you are here. Okay, good. So that, that's the thing. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, come back to this again. Uh, so I think, okay, right, this one, uh, the important date will be this, week seven, week 12 for assignment one, assignment two, okay. And uh, week nine for your test. So the scope for the test, I'm going to let you guys know later, okay. And of course, and the, Assignment one and assignment two will be uploaded to the spectrum later. Okay. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to uh, update uh, this date and then post it to the spectrum later, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Okay, no, that's it. Good. So, okay, are you ready? So, then we are uh, straight to the lecture. Right. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not sure whether you, uh, I don't know how much you know about uh, this course. Okay. Uh, also, how much you know about uh, this topic. Okay. I mean, yeah, this is the FQB 7004, so called uh, proper QFD. Theory, okay. Okay, uh, so uh, I can tell you uh, this paper is very much different from uh, the other paper that you have, you have attended or you're going to attend in this course, yeah. Okay? So in a way, uh, this paper is a theoretical paper, okay. It's a very theory, theory. Okay, it's about theory and not, only that, on top of that, so this is uh, more on mathematics, okay, rather than uh, statistics, okay. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't know the your background in mathematics, okay? so what I can tell you, this one is a, a topic in mathematics, uh, to be more precise, so this is a topic in what we so-called um, real analysis. Okay, uh, topic in, uh, we can say a subtopic in uh, rare analysis, okay. Uh, in a way, uh, it's a theory, so it's a kind of uh, abstract papers, okay. So it's not like a other subject that you have, you, you have or you're going to attend in the course, so which uh, emphasis on more towards to the applications of the thing, formula and so, okay. Uh, however, this one are uh, not the different. Okay, so this will how said um, to discuss about the formulation of this uh, probability theory and statistics. Mm. The underlying uh, formulations of uh, this thing. Okay, so that's why. Uh, it will be very much different. It will be a very mathematical approach. Okay. Mm. So, please uh, get ready for it, huh? Okay. So, uh, I have all together uh, six chapters. Okay. 
So I'll prepare a six chapter. So this is a Yeah, so this is a uh, chapter zero. Yeah, so chapter zero. So it's all about I will gather uh, all the necessary uh, those uh, mathematics. For the cost. Okay, I will gather, try to gather all the important mathematics uh, tools, I would say. Okay, for the course there. Yeah. So, and after that, chapter one and so on. So we will start to discuss the main topics of the course, the uh, probability, random variable, and so on. Yeah. So here I'm going to do a review on some of the mathematical tools that you have learned before, as well as some of the new concept in mathematics that you haven't learned before, okay? Possibly, okay? Uh, so, okay, let's start with this. Uh, okay, I suppose you guys have learned uh, the set theory before, and you guys are familiar with some of the uh, standard notation in set theory okay hopefully so uh one thing so this is a, a first thing that we're going to do is a complement okay so a c so if we given a set a so the complement of a will be all the elements or all the uh, object which does not belong to a okay so i think you can get this right Okay, so if we have a two set A and B, we have a union of them. So I suppose you have learned this before. Yeah. Complement. So union. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then we also have this. So we also have uh, intersections. Yeah, this one. Okay, I assume you know this. Uh, okay, difference. Okay, that, that's the way. Okay, so make it, make it easy. So for example, hmm, number one, uh, let's say this is the whole thing, the universal set. Okay, so this is uh, A. Okay, so if this is A, so the inside is if uh, the one circle is A, so the complement will be this, okay? Everything which is not inside uh, A, so A complement. So, and secondly, so again, if we have a universal set, so let's say we have this, this A, this B, okay? So let's say this is our A, this is our B, Okay, so uh, the union of A of B will be this, okay, A or B. So we are putting all the A and B. And also, so again, if this is A, this is B, so this is a A and B. So then we have, uh, this is A or B, and this is a A and B, yeah? okay. So I believe you guys have seen this before. And number three, okay, maybe this is something new. So it's still the same. So we look at the same diagram. So again, supposing we have a A, we have a B. So this is our A, this is our B. Okay, uh, so the difference between A and B, so we just put a notation A minus B, okay? So A minus B will be uh, all the object which is in A but not in B, okay? So which means in A, okay, not in B. So that, that's the picture for it, okay? So again, I believe you have seen all this. 
Okay, uh, in general, so if you can see uh, for item two and item three, so uh, we discussed only two sets, AB, AB and AB here. Okay? In particular, the unit of AB and the intersection of AB, so we can extend the idea to more than two sets. Okay? So in general, we have this. If you have a class of set, yeah, we just put a script alphabet A. So that means we have a collection of A, lambda. Lambda belongs to index set. So we can talk about the union of this, of them, as well as we can talk about the intersection of the class. Okay, uh, maybe before this, uh, need to briefly explain the meaning of this so-called uh, class, okay? So uh, the rough idea, you know, when we talk about set, so a set is like a, a set is like a collection of certain object, right? Right, a set is a collection of certain objects. So this object could be uh, anything. So we have an example, we can say, uh, the set of all uh, even numbers, okay? So that is a set, right? So that is a set of two, four, six, and so on. And we can also have a set of all groups. Okay, so that will be we can have a uh, apple, okay, a uh, durian, and so on, right? So as you can see, a set the those uh, thing inside, it's not necessarily number. It can be any kind of the thing, uh, object inside, right? Okay, the idea we here since we are talking about objects here, so this object. Could be set. Okay, so that means then we can talk about this, a collection of certain set. So then a set of sets. So if you're using set, that will be a bit um, confusing. So therefore, we use a new term, so called a class, which is just to distinguish between set and class, a collection of certain set. Okay, just to let you know, huh, to distinguish this. Mm. Okay, because uh, in our, uh, okay, I think this is the one. So a class, just to let you know, uh, we just said that the element for class is set. Okay, oh, that's it. And usually when we class, we're going to use uh, the scripts, uh, what do you call it? It's the, uh, uh, landing symbol to describe a class. So for example, we will use uh, A, B, this, and so on, okay, to denote a class. All right, so that's the uh, meaning of class here, okay. Okay, now supposing we have a class of set, script A. So A lambda, lambda belongs to an intact set, capital lambda. So for example, we can have this. So, so we can have an example. So let's say we can say uh, this one to be uh, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and so on. Okay, we have a, we could up to have infinite many of them. So we can say this is a, a lambda. Lambda belongs to uh, the set of all natural number. Okay, so that means uh, this is a, uh, yeah, this. So in this example, then we can have this. We can have a, a class of set which contain more than two. In fact, it can be up to infinitely many of them uh, set. So we can also talk about the union. So that means in this case, then we can have a union of lambda belongs to n 
a lambda. So that's actually a1 union a2 union a3 and so on and up to infinity. So similarly, we can talk about the intersections of this k. So that will be a1 up to a2 and a3 and up to infinity. Okay. Okay, so uh, this intact set here could be any kind of set. However, most of the time we will take uh, this lambda to be the set of all natural numbers. So we can uh, extend the idea for union and intersection up to uh, infinitely many of sets. Uh, so this is the way we're going to uh, denote it, okay? Okay, next we have uh, two important formulas here, so called the De Morgan's formula. So I believe you guys have uh, should have seen this before, right? So the complement of A and B will be the complement of A or complement of um, B. Okay. The complement of A or B will be the complement of A and complement of uh, B here. So again, um, maybe I think just give you a picture for it so that you get a very easy idea for it here. So let's say again, so we're going to have a, let's say we have a A here and we have a B here. So let's say this is our A and B. A and B. Okay, so if you look at A and B, so that will be inside here. So this is our A and B, right? So the red color will be A and B. So if you take the complement for A and B, so that will be everything that's outside here. All the parts, excluding the red color portion, okay, excluding the red color portion. So this will be the complement for it. So as you can see, the, that will be everything except here. So we look at another diagram. So again, so this is A and B. Okay, now we look at here. So the complement of A will be this, the red color. So this is our A. So then if you look at the complement of A, so that will be this. Okay, so uh, excluding A. And if you take the complement of B, so that will be here. Oh, I'm gonna see different. So you can see, uh, maybe we can take this. So we can take a, a label for this. You label all this. So we have labeled all the part except uh, the hole in between. So that means without this. So you can see, so then it end up to be, these two are the same. Okay, so from here we have a, a or B. So this and this are identical. So this is what we so-called a uh, De Morgan's formula. Okay. So again, in general, we can actually apply a, a general formula to the uh, De Morgan's law. So that will be this. Okay, you just have to remember this. Uh, first of all, you have a uh, intersections. Okay. And then you have a uh, set A here, lambda. Okay. So once you apply the uh, complement. Okay, so then what you can do is, so you just have to change this intersection to unions. And after that, you just have to bring the complement inside. Okay, you just have to upside down this and then bring it inside. 
So similarly, you can do the same uh, transformation of this symbol. So again, supposing we have an original, we have this. So if you are taking the complement for this thing. So what you can do is, so the union, you will put it upside down. So it becomes intersections and then you just put the complement inside. Okay, from outside, put inside. Okay, and, and then change the intersection to union. So that, that's the way. Okay, so next one, uh, I think we, we have already, uh, I have already discussed this. So uh, this is our conventions. So as I mentioned just now, um, most of time, so in most cases, we're going to take this uh, lambda theory uh, n. Huh? Okay, so in this case, then we're going to uh, use this notation, union of small n belongs to this uh, set of all natural to be n running from one to infinity. So that, that's the way we... Uh... Oh, we can either use this or use this notation, up to you. Uh, next will be this one. Okay, so this is a very interesting picture over here. Yeah. Okay, this is a very interesting. So you just take note for this. Okay, maybe I put C, yeah? so this A, B. So if you have union, intersection. So if you intersect, so here we have only a finitely many. Okay, if you do the intersection of finitely many of them, so the open or closed interval thing, so it will not be changed. So this one will remain the same. It must be closed at the end. Okay, it will be the same. So similarly, if you have a union, if you take only finitely many union, open, so it's remain open. Thing. So even if you take uh, the close things, ah, forget it. So similarly, if you take the intersection for a closed interval, if you take fi only finally, man okay, uh, I think, uh, wait. Um, okay, doesn't matter. We don't worry about this one. Okay, I think maybe uh, this one I, I should put uh, closer. Mm. Okay, so if you take finally many, so it doesn't matter. It won't uh, alter the shape for the interval. Okay, uh, it will be close to close, open to open, closer. So even if you take uh, this one, so the close one will be remain a close one. So if, even this is finite intersection. So similarly, if you take union, a uh, finite union for close interval, so it will remain the shape of close. Okay, so this is the case. So close, remain close, open, remain open. So when you deal with finite cases doesn't matter so you don't have to worry about the shape of the 
interval, whether it's open or closed. However, when you do the intersection or union, okay, let me end thing. Oh, okay. I... Okay, uh, never mind. let me finish this thing first. I'll come back to you. So this is the case when you consider finite union or finite intersection. So don't worry about the shape of the interval. Huh? However, when you come to the uh, up to infinity, then you have to be very careful. Yeah. When you do up to infinity, so for example, you can this. This will become closed already. So I just look at the example. I think I think maybe we look at this example is good enough. So look at this example. So we are talking about this set uh, minus one over n minus one. Hmm. So I uh, think you can see right here, this is uh, open. So, so here, we have uh, open interval, right? So what happened if we take the intersections uh, n running from one to infinity? So you can see the answer is, it, if we take a uh, intersection of infinitely many of open set, it would turns out to be a closed set. Yeah. So we can do it easily. So we look at this interval. What we can do is we can just check one by one. So when n is one, what do we have? So when n is one, so you substitute n is one here, we actually have minus two up to one right uh, we have this if we take n is two what do we have so if the n is two right so it turns out to be minus 1.5 up to uh, 0.5 yeah uh, it still remain open so we go further if we take n equals to three so what do we have so uh, 1 over 3 will be 0 0.33, so it's around minus 1.33, and then here will be 0 0.33, right? Uh, maybe you take one more, then you can see. So minus 1.25, and then up to 0 0.25, and so on. You can go proceed. Okay, you can look at here. Okay, uh, supposing this is minus two, uh, this is uh, one, right? Okay, uh, first of all, when n is one, uh, we are running from here up to here. Okay, so this is open, right? So that means um, we're actually excluding the two n point, okay? And we get all of them, okay? So we fill up the whole line and excluding the two n point. Okay, okay next, when n equals to two, we turns out to be minus 1.5, 2.5. So which means it will be somewhere here. Okay, so point, uh, point 0.2. So this is uh, minus 1.5, and then we are up to here. So you get a smaller, okay. Then you can see where is our minus one. So for example, we can see uh, this is two. So uh, let's say this is our, just for example, uh, just make it easy. So let's say this is our minus. So this is our minus one and this is our zero. So you can see minus one zero inside. So which is still inside here. And next, if you do further, minus 1.33. So it will be somewhere here. 0 0.33. So this 0 0.5 to get closer to zero. 
Okay, so you can see uh, the red color portion, which is still inside. Okay, it still remains. Up. And if you go further, minus 1.25, so it's somewhere here. It's even smaller, so this is also a smaller one. Yet, this is minus 1 to 0, which is still inside. So if you keep going, so you can see minus 1 and 0 always included inside. Although, uh, in all this line, the two endpoints are not included. Okay? So if you take up to infinity, at the end of the day, this minus 1 and 0 will be always belongs to all the line. So that's why this is always belongs to here. And you're getting closer and closer to it. Uh, so if you take the intersection, that will be open to close. Okay, so you have to be a uh, take note for these things. Uh, sorry, sir, can I ask something? Yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask this intersection, right? Is it intersection of two different classes for the uh, the two things within the open interval? I don't understand. No, no, actually, it's, uh, this is one class. Okay, a class of open set. So it's like a set of coordinates, is it? No, no, it's a it's a set of set. Okay. Set. Okay, I have a class. Uh, okay, it's like that. So actually, it's like uh, we have a script A. So this is a class. So the element inside the first element is the interval minus two to one. Okay, oh. this is the first element, okay. and the second element will be this minus 1.5 to 0 0.5. And the third element will be minus 0.33 and so on, 0 0.33. Okay, and so okay. on. Get it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so that this is it. Uh, oh, as I okay. say, you, you get a picture? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, I got it. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Uh. And and the closed interval, it means that it includes the minus and one and negative one and zero as well, is it? Uh yes. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, uh. okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh again, that, that's the issue here. So I uh I don't know the back your background of the mathematics. Okay. So I assume you have learned all this in at least in your bachelor degree or in your in your high school things huh so i, I believe this one is a kind of standard right uh, so for example uh open uh open, maybe just a review a quick very quick okay so we talk about open interval okay so that means uh, we are exclude right? the, the two endpoint. Okay, open. Open means we exclude the two endpoint. So uh, example, we use this notation zero to one. So that means without zero and without one. Okay, we put like this. Okay, so excluding zero and one. So this is a uh, open interval. And we talk about close interval. So we are going to include uh, both endpoints. Okay, so that means. So of course, we also have an open. Okay, so this one, uh, um, so that will be zero to one. We use uh, this notation. Okay, of course, we, we also have an open, close interval. Okay, so that will be like this. Uh, sorry, open, close, right? Uh, so we have uh, basically, we have how many types? Four types, right? Uh, open, close. Okay, so we also have a close, open. Interval. So example zero to one. Okay. 
Okay, so this uh, okay, four types of these things, eh? Mm. Okay, ah, so that's an example. So this is excluding. So the mean term. This one is we include zero to one. So for this, right? So we exclude zero, but we uh, include one. So uh, zero is included, but one is excluded. Okay, so we have a four different kind of the uh, interval, right? So I, I would say this is the nature for the interval. So what I'm trying to tell you is, what I'm trying to tell you with this. So when, when you take a finite intersection of finite unions, okay, it won't alter the nature of the interval. Okay, I just put it here. So finite intersections all union would not change uh, can I say nature okay <laughs> okay I'm running out of space uh, okay borrow a little bit will not change the nature of the interval okay mm. so that that's there so this is what i'm trying to tell you so you can take finite when you take finitely many of the set if you take either intersection or union so you don't have to worry about this so it's always remain the same huh? it won't change it uh, it will order the nature of the interval so however when you go up to infinity so you have to be careful when you go up to infinity, so this is an example when this is open. So when you do you intersection up to infinity, it might turn out to be a closed one. So this will end up to be this. Okay. Uh, again, uh, luckily, it won't be too complicated. Uh, you just look at these four patterns only. Okay, so what you can do is you may assume this is zero, for example. So uh, if you take the interval, you get things smaller and smaller uh, from this side. So you take intersection, so it ends up to be a closed one. Uh, but this one, it doesn't matter. It will affect close to close. So that, that's the way for it. Okay, so uh, this is another example. So you can, you can verify easily. Okay, maybe just again, uh, just to let you know, uh, uh, this is a class. So this is a set. Uh, so because uh, interval is a set, okay, this is a set. So just to let you know again, a class is a group of Okay, so when I, in future, whenever I mention class, so then immediately you think of it, element of class is a set. Okay, maybe I can put it in this way. A class is a group of set. This too far. Okay, a class is a group of a uh, set, or the other way, or you can put it in this way, uh, element of a class are. Mm. 
Okay, uh, just remember this. Okay, so uh, so we, we can do the similar uh, calculation for this to get the answer. Okay, so the next one you can see this. So for example, if you look at it, mm -hmm. similar calculation, negative infinity to one over n. If we take union for it, what happens to it? Okay, so you can see uh, when you look at the first one, n is equals to one, you can do the similar calculation that will be negative infinity to one. Okay, so when n is 2, so that will be negative infinity to 0 0.5 and so on. So when n is 3, you get negative infinity to 0 0.333 and so on, including. So again, as I said, you can see this. So just look at the line here. Of course, the, this is uh, infinity. So this is from infinity and then up to one x, including one. So this is a negative infinity. So it's a, this is a negative infinity to zero. And uh, let's say one is here. So you can see uh, this. Uh, okay, no, I think not zero. Okay, we can put one here. Uh, yeah, zero is smaller than it, so zero is here. So you can see uh, this is always inside zero to here, it's always belong to here. So the next one will be from negative infinity up to. Sorry, Professor, zero. isn't it negative one? Which one? Negative one over n. Uh, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. Then I have to redraw my picture. Okay, thanks, thanks. Then I have to redraw my picture. Yep, so minus one over n, so this is minus one including, so then minus 0 0.5. This is a minus 0 0.33. Okay, you, okay, so this one. So first we have a infinity up to minus one. Maybe here, bigger, bigger one. Minus one. zero is here okay so first of all it's only up to here right next it's negative infinity up to 0 0.5 so which is up to here including 0 0.5 and next from negative infinity up to 0 negative 0 0.33 so however it's never reached zero zero is not included zero is not included here so you can see this line will be getting closer and closer to zero but never touch zero, right? You can see this, maybe I draw this line here. Okay, so this end will get closer and closer, but never touch this line, okay? So you can see it will never include zero. So that's why you will get the answer will be negative infinity up to zero. So that, that, that's the idea how we can see. So it will closer and closer to zero, but never reach zero. Okay, that, that's the thing for that. Okay, so... Uh, what is this actually? Oh, okay. Uh, this is the example. Uh, oh, I'm I uh, missed this one. So this is uh, another symbol. So given a set omega. So uh, so let's say omega is a set. So the power set of of omega. So 
this is a so-called powers of omega. We're going to use this no notation, a uh, script P of omega. So this is the class of all subset of omega. Okay. So this is an example. So let's say your omega is consists of three object, one, two, three. Then the power set of this, you just list out all the subset. Uh, empty set is one of the subset of omega. So that means empty set, the set with only one element, one, two, three, okay. And then the set with two element, one, two, one, three. And then the set of uh, two, three as well, and the set of three element. So this is the, uh, the mean of power set. Okay, so when omega is finite, so we can always list out all the elements of P, omega. So when omega is infinite set, so then it's impossible for us to list out all of them. Yeah. We can only describe it. Yeah. Okay, next one will be this uh, okay, it's a important function, it's so-called indicator function. So it's a function which defined from a given set omega to zero one. So one A omega is zero when omega belongs, uh, when omega does not belong to A, one omega belongs to A. So in a way you can, you can say this is sort of like a, a switch function, okay? Okay, switch function. Oh, I think it's so in a way you can say uh this one a is something like a switch function. Okay, so when omega belongs to a. So that means it's sort of like you switch on. So the value will be equals to one. So when omega is not in A, so then you switch it off. So the value will return zero. Okay, so that, that's the way for it. So if you want to, uh, and, and a very simple example, so example, so let's say you look at, uh, a is this uh, 0 to 1, okay, excluding the two end point, and then uh, 5 to 10, including 10. Mm. So how's the graph looks like? So if you look at uh, y is equal to 1a, okay, uh, then you can see the graph will be like this. So you look at here, so zero to one, and then five to 10, right? Okay, so these two are the interval. So you can see whenever your omega belongs to this interval, the value returns one. So it's right here. Uh, this is open, right? So exclude, exclude. And then, so all the value here will be zero. And this will be, zero and zero. Okay, next, from five to 10, it returns value one. So exclude five, however, include 10. So that's the value, okay? So it's sort of like here, if you in this portion, you uh, switch off, okay? Off it, so off it, here, off and then you switch on. So it returns the value one. Okay, it depends on how's the shape of your A. Okay, then, then you have things like that. So this is what we so-called indicator functions. Okay, uh, we're going to use it quite often in, in our course later. Okay, we have uh, these uh, properties for the indicator functions. Okay, uh, forget about the inferior and superior at the moment. Just look at this one first, okay? Okay, first of, uh, maybe this one is easy. If A subset to B, then one A always less equal to one B, okay? One A plus one A complement is always equals to returns value one. Uh, the indicator, indicator function of A and B is equals to indicator function A times indicator function of B. 
So to, to verify these four formula is quite strict, uh, easy. We can actually uh, do it using the table. Okay? So for example, we just look at it. We uh, verify. I'm just show you the first one. One uh, in theorem, 0 0.24. Okay? So we want to verify the indicator function one of a and b is equal to 1a multiplying 1b. So uh, like I say, since this is sort of like a switch function, uh, we take a off and on properties. So we can actually use a table to verify it. Okay, so what we can do is, okay, we can look at this property. So look at the omega. We want to verify this, right? So that means what we need to do, we want to verify 1a and b of omega always equals to 1a omega multiplied 1b omega. For, for all, omega belongs to the domain. Uh, we just need to verify the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Okay, what we can do is we can actually use a table to do it. Uh, let's look at it. So since we involve omega and involve two set A, B, right? So that means we look at these two behavior. So uh, omega belongs to A, omega belongs to B. Okay, also, we can see omega belongs to A and B. And then uh, what is one in? Oh, I'm running out of space. Uh, okay. I need all together. Okay, uh, put a smaller one here. Omega belongs to A. Okay, maybe I borrow a little bit space so from here. One A Omega multiplying. 1b omega. Okay, so uh, omega belongs to A, omega belongs to B. So we have four different cases. So either first omega belongs to A and omega in B as well. Omega in A, but Omega does not in B. Omega not in A, in B, not in A, and not in B. Okay. okay. So if Omega in A, Omega in B, so Omega must be in uh, A and B. So then we have uh, not, not, not. Easy. So uh, because of this is a switch function, Omega in A, so these two, we're going to switch on, right? On, on, off, off, or here. So this one is on, off, on, off on, off, on, off, okay? Okay, so this corresponding to this, huh? mm. so this is on, off, 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 so we're going to have uh, one, zero, 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 okay, maybe just to let you know, I'm going to use a green color so that you can see the ratio. Okay, next, you just multiply one times one. So we're going to have one, one times zero, we got zero. Zero times one, we got zero. This one zero. Okay, so you multiply, you will get this. Okay, you can see these two are identical. All right? Both, uh, both give you the value, returns value one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that's why these two are the same. So that, that's the way to verify it.
Okay, maybe I'll give you a smaller picture. Okay, so, uh, so this is how to how we can verify it. Okay, uh, then these two are the same now. Okay, so then we have verified. So hence one a and b omega is equal to one a omega multiplied one b omega for any omega. So we have got this. So the rest you can actually uh, verify on yourself. Okay, so it's not difficult. Okay, uh, please remember, uh, this is an important formula. So uh, I think we're going to use it quite often okay, in, in, in the remaining chapter. Okay, uh, this is the one. So this is uh, something about uh, set theory. Most of the important properties of set theory. Okay, next we proceed to this. Uh, we are talking about the sequence of numbers. Okay? So we're going to discuss two different kinds of sequence. So first of all, we look at a sequence of number. So uh, roughly speaking, a sequence is like that. So we're going to have a object, one object, we can two object, three and so on. Okay. So that means a sequence is something that we can always uh, list out all the object one by one. Mm. So as you can see, the object here, here could be numbers or other things. Like So it could be numbers oh. or it could be other things like set. Okay. Uh, so here we talk about uh, the first case that is we just look at a sequence of number. Uh, I believe you should have already seen this in calculus, okay? a sequence of numbers. Huh? Okay, so sequence of number. So we can have an example uh, sequence number sequence of, of number so we can have for example we can have uh, x k is equal to 2 over k so then we're going to have 2 over 1 2 over 2 2 over 3 2 over 4 and so on okay so this is an example of sequence of number Okay, uh, when we have this, then we have uh, four concepts here. First, uh, infimum. Okay, it could with this, minimum. Maybe we look at these two first. What's the difference? Huh? Okay, uh, infimum is the greatest lower bound. So you look at all the lower bounds and then you identify the, uh, the, the largest one. Okay, so this is... Um, Minimum is the infimum, which is also an element of S. So you can put it in this way. So uh, put it in this way. Uh, infimum is sort of like, uh, how should I say it? Uh, the uh, elders. among your brothers, sisters, and oh, how to write cursor now? My English rusted today. How to write cursor? C-O-U-R-S-I-N, right? Ah, so the elders among all your uh, brother, sister, and cousin as well. Okay, so uh, 
in inclusive someone which uh, is not inside your family. You can put it in this way. Okay. So uh, minimum. Okay. So this is the eldest among all your brothers and sisters. Ah, so this one must be uh, in the same in the family. Okay, must be must be must be a uh, one of the member of your family. Ah, something like that. Okay. Can I say this? Mm, yeah. Okay. So you can put it in this way. So similarly, uh, then you can have supremo. Supremo is sort of like uh, uh, elders among, sorry, uh, I, I should say elders among all your younger brothers and sister. Yeah, you have all the brother sister that is younger than you, and then you see who is the eldest one, uh, including your cousin. Minimum is you look at among all your brother sister that is younger than you then you see the eldest one okay you have to exclude the person uh, that that's the thing for it okay so similarly you have a supremum and maximum okay supremum is the all the elders and then you find the younger the upper the least upper bound maximum will be the supremum but which is also an elements of s okay so that that's the way for it so the easiest way will be like this. You identify these infimum and then you make sure which is also an element. Okay, which is also an element inside. Okay, so which is also an element. So in primum, and which is also an element, so that will be a minimum. Okay, that, that's the way. So that, that's the way. So when some, when S is unbounded above below, so we put a negative infinity to be the infimum. When unbounded above, the supreme will be uh, infinity. So uh, let's look at this example. So I feel an answer in, in your lecture note, but just leave it blank just to demonstrate idea how to do it here. Okay, so for example, you look at S. S is con a set consists of only three elements here. So you look at here, uh, which one is the infimum? So you can see one will be the infimum, right? So because uh, it's always smaller than the other one. And one is inside, so one is also minimum. Okay, the reason is one is inside. One is inside S. Okay. Ah, uh, this is not. Maybe I can zoom in here. Okay. Ah, uh, one is an element of S. Ah, uh, so we can have seven. So in this case, seven is larger, right? So seven is a supremum, and also seven is an element of S. So seven is the maximum. Okay. So now look at this example. 1142 so you can see uh 11 will be the the, the smallest one right so that will be in premium will be 11 and also 11 is inside s so 11 is a minimum so similarly 42 will be the supremum okay but 42 does not belong to it so we do not have maximum for this case So this one, uh, I think if you look at here, it seems to be clear. So zero will be the infimum and nine will be the supremum. Okay. So uh, two is not, okay, you look at the largest and the smallest. Okay, so you can see zero is infimum, but zero does not belong to here, this is open. So we do not have minimum for this case and we do not have maximum for this case. Nine does not include 
inside. Okay, n is the set consists of one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Okay, so if you look at here, there's no n thing here, so which means the supremum will be infinity. And infinity does not, infinity is not a number, okay? Infinity is not a number, so please take notes of it. Uh, infinity is not a number, okay? Which is just a symbol, which is a uh, word of it. So this is not a number, so therefore, this one does not belong to, it's not a natural number, so there is no maximum. So one is the smallest and also inside. Okay, one is the inferior. Okay, what is a Z? Minus two, minus one, zero, one, and so on. So you see that- uh, Sorry, doctor. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask uh, the maximum we cannot write as uh, infinity also. No, uh, because if you look at the, the, the idea, Okay, you look at minimum, uh, minimum say uh, it is an infimum, which is also an element of S. Maximum of S is a supremum, which is also an element of S. Okay, element. So it have to be an element of S, right? Uh, same as minimum. So as I said, infinity is not a number. N is a set of all natural number. Okay, this is all natural number. Uh, all natural number. So that means all the elements for it must be a number. So infinity does not belong to here. Okay, so that's why you can see infinity is not a number. So then you can see uh, that's why infinity, how should I say, uh, no place to write. And so this one is not an element for n. Get it? And also, uh, and also infinity cannot be any more of that, which is not an integer. Okay, I hope you oh. get this picture. Okay. Ah. Okay, good. Ah, ah. So this is very important. Huh? This is, infinity is not a number. <laughs> so that's why in this case, I think it's similar. Uh, supremum must be infinity. Oh, times fly. So... Okay, we have five minutes left, make it quick. Huh? So this is minus infinity. So we have no these two things, okay? Okay, how about this one? Uh, one over N, so maybe we, we, we need to look at this part. Okay, so. Just to let you get an idea. So if you look at S is uh, one over N, N is an integer. So that means this is like a, again, I think I, I put it in this way better. So one, one over two, one over three, one over four, one over five, one over six, and so on. Uh, just to let you see the picture. So I think, I think it's clear, right? In this case, uh, which one is the max? One is the maximum and minimum. Uh, I think in this case it's quite clear. I hope it's clear now. So in this case, uh supremum for this will be eight. Huh? Ah, sorry, not eight. One. Okay, one is inside, one must be a maximum. Got it? So if you look at here, if you look at the line, if you put a line here. So this is one, this is zero. First we are uh, one and then half, uh, half becomes, uh, where is it? Uh, uh, 0 0.33, somewhere, I don't know where is it. Okay, somewhere here, one over three and one over four, one over five, one over six, one over seven, one over nine. It never touch zero, right? It never touch zero but it's very close to zero. So from here, you can see zero will be a mean, uh, infimum. 
I hope you can get a picture. Okay, it cannot go beyond zero, and it never reached zero, so there is no minimum. Uh, in fact, I think it's uh, quite straightforward. You can just look at the limit for it. So 7, 10. Okay, so maybe let us stop here. Okay, so it's about 7.30 already. So we stop here. Uh, as I propose, uh, we take a break for half an hour. Yeah, so you guys can have your lunch or go to a, do a praying section. Yeah, then we carry on our second section for lecture in 8 o'clock, right? Uh, before that, you have any questions? Ah, okay, so maybe let me answer this question first. Uh, what's that? Sorry, I can't see. Okay, I ma, so the question is, is the assignment will be individual or in group? So the assignment is uh, individual, yeah? Um, no group assignment. Uh. So uh, any other questions before the break? Great, uh, I suppose no. Okay, so let's take a break. So we carry on our lecture on eight o'clock, right? Okay, see you guys.